Hey there, movie buffs. Ever wondered about the untold tales behind the 1971 flick, The Omega Man? Brace yourself, because there's a trove of funny, shocking, and downright sad facts waiting to unravel as you delve into this classic. Did you know there are lesser-known anecdotes that might just blow your mind? And how about that classic Hollywood actor who stole the show? Who's your favorite? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. But hold on tight, we've got more than just trivia. There's a hook in every scene, promising an intriguing journey through this post-apocalyptic masterpiece. So, are you ready for the ride? Now, we're curious about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this gem. Share your stories in the comments, we'd love to hear them. Keep those eyes peeled for the unexpected twists and turns, and don't forget to hit us with your anecdotes and favorites. Your thoughts could be the missing piece in this cinematic puzzle. Stay tuned for more and keep the discussion alive. After all, every great film has its untold stories. Boris Segal's adaptation of Richard Matheson's Last Man on Earth story, titled The Omega Man, is regarded as one of the more respected renditions. Unlike the visually grand I Am Legend from 2007 or The Eerie Last Man on Earth by Ubaldo Ragana, the movie offers a thoughtful sci-fi adventure. The narrative follows Dr. Robert Neville, portrayed by Charlton Heston, who survives a man-made plague that decimates most of humanity. Despite developing a cure, an unfortunate incident prevents mass production, leaving Neville immune but isolated. He faces nightly threats from vampire-like plague victims led by Matthias, a puritanical Luddite fanatic. They see the plague as salvation, condemning their past lives as evil. Neville, representing everything they despise, strives for survival and endeavors to recreate the cure. One day, he encounters a young woman, played by Rosalind Cash, posing as a mannequin in a department store. The TV movie is not a spectacle with elaborate special effects. The director deliberately situates the story in the contemporary era, devoid of futuristic elements. It exhibits economical direction, occasionally revealing its budget constraints. While the cinematography is effective, some action scenes lack convincing execution. Nevertheless, the cast, especially Cash and Heston, delivers strong performances. Remarkably, it portrays an abandoned 1971 Los Angeles without relying on special effects, achieving a visual impact comparable to the higher budget I Am Legend in 27. It stands as an example of the experimental tendencies in late 1960s, early 1970s Hollywood filmmaking. Influenced by the Cold War, nuclear proliferation, Vietnam, and the counterculture movement, it aligns with other sci-fi landmarks of the time, such as 200 A Space Odyssey, Silent Running, Rollerball, and even the original Star Trek series. In conclusion, it is a recommended viewing experience that captures a unique moment in the evolution of mainstream sci-fi, offering a glimpse into the intellectual currents of its era. Tim Burton, celebrated for his cinematic endeavors, openly declared The Omega Man from 1971 as one of his personal favorites. In fact, he even went as far as stating that if stranded on a desert island, it would be his sole cinematic companion. This affinity led to a subsequent collaboration with Charlton Heston in the remake of Planet of the Apes. Set against the backdrop of August 1977, the movie provides a glimpse into a dystopian world. The central character, Neville, cruises through the desolate landscape in his car, accompanied by the unmistakable sounds of Sinatra's Strangers in the Night from an 8-track. However, due to licensing constraints, an instrumental rendition of A Summer Place replaces it in the soundtrack. Tim Burton's endorsement and the film's specific temporal setting contribute to the unique allure of the Omega Man, offering viewers a cinematic experience that resonates through the decades. In the realm of cinematic history, the movie stands as a testament to its enduring appeal, leaving an indelible mark on those who appreciate its straightforward narrative and evocative storytelling. So, if stranded on that hypothetical desert island, one might find solace in the company of The Omega Man, a film that continues to capture the imagination, transcending the boundaries of time. In The Omega Man, a devastating global plague stemming from germ warfare triggered by the China-Russia border conflict in the late 60s thrusts the world into chaos. The film subtly reflects the real tensions of that time when leaders feared the escalation of border skirmishes into a full-blown war between the communist giants. The writers took a bold step in depicting an interracial relationship in the movie. 
Amidst the post-apocalyptic setting, they reasoned that in a world nearly devoid of humanity, the survivors would prioritize survival over outdated societal norms. Neville's love interest being an African-American woman challenged the societal norms of the 70s, but added a layer of realism to the character dynamics in this desolate world. Before the Omega Man, Hammer Films, a British studio, considered adapting Richard Matheson's book as The Night Creatures. However, the project, personally written by Matheson, was deemed too graphic and eventually collapsed, never making it to the screen. They enriched the viewer's understanding of the Omega Man, elevating it beyond a typical post-apocalyptic narrative. Charlton Heston, having read the original novel during a flight to Los Angeles, expressed keen interest in a contemporary adaptation. Unaware of its previous iteration as The Last Man on Earth, starring Vincent Price, Heston embraced the prospect of bringing the story to life. The choice of filming locations posed a challenge with the production company desiring an abandoned metropolitan setting. A cost-effective solution emerged as downtown Los Angeles, devoid of shoppers on weekends, provided the eerie backdrop for most exteriors. In an unexpected turn, Charlton Heston, a stranger to motorcycles, found himself riding one for the film. This unfamiliarity added an authentic dimension to his character, navigating the desolate world with a skill he had not previously possessed. The producer's pragmatic discovery of a deserted downtown Los Angeles and Heston's venture into motorcycle riding underscored the resourcefulness behind the scenes. These insights, gleaned from a reputable source, shed light on the practical aspects of bringing the Omega Man to life, offering a glimpse into the film's production intricacies. Filmed during October and November 1970, the production of the Omega Man showcases the resourcefulness of its team. Originally, Charlton Heston sought Orson Welles to direct, highlighting the collaboration's potential. The Fortress Home set, standing in Burbank on Warner Brothers Ranch Park Boulevard, remains unchanged, visible on Google Maps 3D with a clear east-southeast orientation. Charlton Heston's initiative to involve Orson Welles and the enduring set structure contribute to the behind-the-scenes narrative, providing a practical perspective on its creation. Crafted with precision, these insights add depth to its history, demonstrating the deliberate choices made during its inception and offering a concrete connection to its tangible remnants. The journey from script to screen for this 1970 film encompasses fascinating elements. Filming unfolded with pragmatic decisions on location and directorial preferences. Charlton Heston's early collaboration aspirations with Orson Welles underscore the movie's potential and the industry dynamics at play. Meanwhile, the enduring facade in Burbank, a visible testament to its tangible legacy, serves as a subtle reminder of its production intricacies. The practical choices made, from directorial considerations to the enduring set, weave a narrative that transcends the screen, offering enthusiasts a glimpse into its history. Charlton Heston's involvement in The Omega Man comes with notable details that add layers to the film's narrative. According to David Shipman's great movie Stars the International Years, Heston earned a salary of 300000 for his role, emphasizing the financial scale of the production. In his diary entries during the film's making, Charlton Heston expressed a growing weariness with action hero roles, marking a significant point in his career. This insight reveals a personal perspective on the actor's mindset during the production, contributing to the understanding of his career evolution. Additionally, Heston played a pivotal role in the casting of Anthony Zerb for the movie. Having witnessed Zerb's theatrical performance, Heston advocated for his inclusion in the Omega Man's cast. This behind-the-scenes involvement sheds light on the collaborative decisions shaping the film, showcasing Heston's influence beyond his on-screen presence. These revelations, sourced from a reputable website, offer a glimpse into the financial dynamics, the actor's evolving career sentiments, and the collaborative casting decisions that contributed to the making of The Omega Man.